Welcome to the Mixology Talk Podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Julia, and we're the folks behind A Bar Above. So I help run uh, A Bar Above and also help bars and restaurants with their beverage programs. And I run our shop. I work with our factories, I work with our shippers to make sure stuff gets where it needs to go, and I work with Chris to make sure that we are creating awesome bar tools. So this is episode number 164, and today we're going to be talking all about punches. Um, Not the ones that I remember from college. (laughs) Or don't remember. Most likely, yeah. Um, We had one called Jungle Juice. Oh yeah, we had that too. I think everybody has Jungle Juice. Yeah, so basically, if you haven't heard of Jungle Juice, it is basically literally a trash can with a plastic liner in it, filled with ice, juice, and a wild assortment of booze. Whatever people brought. Right. It, it was kind of it a tragedy. Was all it was yeah. So, bad. so you can imagine yeah. like Jägermeister and rum and orange juice and wine. There's always the Serrano. <laughs> box wine. No, we're right. not going to judge you. Drink what you like, and if that's what you like, you're cool. Like that's fine. We're actually not going to talk about a, the jungle juice recipe today. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking a little bit more about craft punch. And when we say that, what I mean is really large format cocktails. So we've got, if you're watching on a video format, we've got this beautiful, like, this is like 1950s. 19- oh, I was going to uh, go with like 1992 pretending to be. Oh, uh, okay. It's ugly. That's all you need to know. This ugly, sorry, mom. This was my mom's punch bowl. She gave it to me. So hopefully she's not watching, but um, <laughs> we've got this one. Um, Punches are typically served in a punch bowl or um, we also have a drink dispenser. They're large format cocktails designed to serve lots of people all at once. And this is a great time to talk about them because we're filming on November 1st. Right, so the holidays are coming up on us and this is a great way to entertain a lot of guests without having to tend bar the entire time Mm -hmm. because that just kind of sucks. Yeah, Um, sometimes you want to actually mingle. So if if you're going to be having a cocktail party at any point in the next two months, this is a great episode to listen to. We're going to talk all about how you can make a large format cocktail out of any recipe so that you can have your guests serve themselves. So it wouldn't be a cocktail if it didn't have lots of different stories um, on its origin. So (laughs) we did a little bit of research on what the origin of the word punch is. And there's a couple different ones. um, One of which is the fact that the word punch is actually Hindi for the number five, which kind of makes sense because traditionally a punch has five ingredients or five components. You've got spirit, you've got water, citrus, sugar, and spice. So you can kind of see the connection there. Five, five components. Uh, most people have refuted this. This is not generally to be considered to be the true origin of the word punch, but it's kind of nice wordplay. Yeah, and um, from what I gathered and what, uh, what information I pulled during the research for this um, is the originator of the term punch was actually in India. Um, and this is where a lot of this comes from is the British history in India in like the 1600s. Um, but David Wondrich also says that he was only there for a small amount of time and that there is actually a better story of where this term punch probably came from. And that is the barrels that are used um, to age rum in. I, I'm going to butcher it, um, <laughs> but I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, the term is called punchon, punchon, punchon. Was, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, very punchon. French. I feel very fancy. And I, like I said, I fully acknowledge I totally butchered that. You but need basically, a I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, but basically, it is the barrel that um, is used for aging some rums. It's a big squat barrel. Um, I think it's 500 liters or 132 gallons. So it's big. Um, but this is where the term he th- believes that punch came from. And um, so the story behind them is kind of, uh, it, again, it has to do with that sort of British Indian sort of part of history mm-hmm. um, where the sailors, of course, are spending a lot of time on the water transporting goods back and forth, but wine was taking up too much space on the boats. And so they were able to bring rum instead as it was kind of more compact. But then, of course, when you get to your destination, it's still rum, it's not wine. And so what David uh, said in his book, which, again, if you write the book called Punch, I'm willing to probably go with you on this one. Yeah. Um, What he said is basically that punch was kind of the sailor's way of trying to replicate wine. You take a high-proof spirit, you add water to bring down the proof a little bit, then you add a little bit of citrus to add some acidity, and then you bring a little sugar in, both to bring down the acidity and also to add some of the sweet character that you would find in a lot of wines of that day and then finally finish it off with spice for flavor 
Now, it probably tasted nothing like wine, but it, it was probably more similar drinkability than, of course, just sort of sipping on a barrel of rum. Yeah, and also you don't want to just be doling out rum to a bunch of sailors all day long because they're just going to get intoxicated. They'll probably have a fight or two and probably just pass out somewhere. So this is a way to kind of stretch everything out, um, all your ingredients, and also, you know, the whole scurvy thing. You're getting those vitamins in there. Um, so there was a lot of good things that came from this. And my understanding is that when they went into port, um, the merchants were found it very fashionable to sit down and have a bowl of punch uh, with the sailors that just came in. And I could see how that would kind of find its way into high society, which where punches really kind of took off in the 1600s was in high society, how it kind of made its way there through the merchant class. Um, so that was a really kind of interesting uh, history on the origin of punches and where it all kind of came from. But don't take it from us if you love this sort of thing. Definitely do read the book. It's very easy to remember. It's called Punch. And honestly, um, we probably forgot more than yeah. uh, he ever written on this Take subject, it from David, so. don't take it from us. <laughs> exactly. But either way, I think that the, the thing to remember is probably that that five ingredient formula. Typically, a, a traditional punch is gonna have those five components. You're gonna have spirit, you're gonna have water, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about later on today. You're gonna have citrus, sugar, and spice for flavor. So mm -hmm. that's a traditional punch. So for the purposes of our conversation today, um, we're gonna be talking about punch in a non-traditional way. Um, punch has a very specific meaning and cocktail nerds will say, oh, it has to have these five ingredients, just in the same way that the word cocktail is a very specific meaning. They're both very ubiquitous terms now. Um, so we're gonna kind of veer away from that super traditional five ingredient punch definition. Right, exactly. Uh, but on the other hand, of course, uh, nowadays punch doesn't mean anything at all. Um, you could argue that um, taking this punch bowl, filling it with Sprite, cranberry juice, and a little bit of orange juice, that that's a punch as well. And that's not really what we're talking about either. So today what we wanted to talk about is basically large format craft cocktails. And what we mean by that is by large format, we're talking about either a punch bowl or a uh, drink dispenser. And we're talking about something that guests can serve themselves again so that you don't end up bartending all night. And then we're, but we're still keeping it craft. And what we mean by that is again, it's going to be a true cocktail recipe. Um, it's going to have spirit, it's going to have alcohol, um, but it's also going to be made with craft ingredients and we're going to try to stick with things like homemade ingredients, high quality, and um, fresh juices, things mm -hmm. like that. Okay, we've talked a lot about punch and large format cocktails. Now it's time to actually talk about how to make them. The key thing with large format cocktails is actually all about the water. It sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but something you may not realize is that when you shake or stir any normal non-large format cocktail, you're introducing a lot of water. Um, somewhere between 20 and 30%, depending on who you ask and frankly how much of a nerd they are. Um, <laughs> but with the punch, you're typically not shaking or stirring, and if you do stir, certainly not as long, so you're not going to be introducing nearly as much water. That means if you use a traditional cocktail recipe, you're going to be making something that's way stronger than what the recipe originally intended. So something to keep in mind whenever you're making your large format cocktail recipe is that you've got to increase the water content. Yeah, and a good example of this is if you have ever kept your vodka in the freezer and you go to make a martini, you add your ice, you shake it up and it's just super super hot it's because it's so cold it's not going to introduce a lot of water content so um just something else to keep in mind is we're going to add water into the to the ingredients um when we make a large format drink and this is something you'll run into if you're if you're batching as well i mean this is this is something that's that's pretty much always going to be the case whenever you're going to be serving a cocktail without that additional dilution step Absolutely. So let's take it all the way down to the beginning. Let's say you're going to host a party. Uh, you have a large event that you're going to be catering, whatever it is going to be. How do you figure out how much to make? Um, and it all starts with your guest count. Let's say you have a party, you're inviting 40 people over. You have to figure out, all right, is this a heavy drinking crowd um, or is this a light drinking crowd? Um, if you're going to have different options as far as like beer and wine, that's also going to kind of play into it. So my general rule of thumb is if it's a heavy drinking crowd, it's somewhere between two to three drinks per person. Just think about your 
your evenings and when you go out to parties, does that seem reasonable? You know your friends better than I do, so um, you, you know their history and how, how they like to drink. Um, and if it's a light drinking crowd or you have beer and wine as well, and you know they kind of gravitate towards that direction, typically about one cocktail per person is uh, usually what I would recommend. That's a good average to start with, yeah. Yeah, so then, so then you know how much you're gonna have to have, right? So if it's two to three per person, you have 40 people, that's 120 servings of cocktails on the high end. Um, so then you can just kind of do the math, all right? Let's get a cocktail recipe and just calculate out all the ingredients that I need to make 150 or 180, however many uh, cocktails you're going to need to make. And um, that's kind of like where to start from, basically. So you throw it all in a bucket, mm -hmm. give it a stir. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, is, that, is that it? <laughs> it's kind of. So um, for building this cocktail or building this big punch, basically, um, you want to have a big, big vessel to store all this in. When I was doing service, it was about Cambros, and they have like five-gallon bucket Cambros. So it's like the water containers you would get from like Arrowhead or a, a mm -hmm. another drinking fountain company. Um, and I would build them in nose and um, then, you know, add two to three bottles of booze, however much alcohol you're using, add all the ingredients, so the syrup, the juices, um, all of it goes in there. The last thing I would add, and probably during service I would do this, or if you have a party, put it off to the size, is anything carbonated. Um, so like ginger beer, if you're mm -hmm. doing a large Moscow meal format or anything like that, because carbonation is going to, go away very quickly. Um, so you leave that out at this point? Yeah, absolutely. I'll leave that for the last minute. I won't even put it in a punch bowl. I'll just have it off to the side and people can add it. Oh, um, really? As they see fit. Yeah. Um, That's true. Um, carbonation can often add kind of a weird scum to the top of like, drinks, especially if you've got citrus pulp in there. Right. So that's that's not a bad idea at all. Yeah. And people can control their own carbonation or alcohol level at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would probably add about 10% water because as Julia mentioned, you're going to have somewhere between 20 and 30% dilution. Um, but you're also going to be chilling these ingredients down, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, so that you won't have as much dilution when you add it to the to the ice. And traditionally also, something we haven't mentioned yet, but we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, is there's gonna be one big fat ice cube in the middle of your punch drink. Right. That's gonna help keep it cold, but it's also gonna have, um, it's not gonna be diluting too much um, because we obviously don't want to get too much dilution in the other direction. Yeah, so now that you've built this thing out in a big, large, bucket basically you're just going to put them back in bottles uh you're not going to be able to put that bucket back in your fridge you might be able to um but it's a lot easier <laughs> right it's a lot easier just to hold them in bottles so if you have poured three bottles out of vodka or whatever you're going to put in the drink save those bottles put them back in the in those bottles and put them in the fridge for storage um and then usually i'll start off with like a large volume of ingredients first like 50 mm percent -hmm. of my drink put it in the punch bowl, add the ice, and then off to service we go. And then you can go ahead and just refill as needed. Mm -hmm. The benefit of that is that obviously the uh, the extra cocktail is sitting in your fridge, staying cold but not getting diluted. And of course, um, the part that's out and about with your uh, with your friends is, is certainly getting warmer as the room temperature, but it's obviously um, only gonna be a small portion of the overall cocktail. So you can kind of refill as you go. Absolutely. So now you're at your party and you're serving your drink. There's a couple different ways that you can actually serve that we wanted to mention here. Um, again, if you're watching the video, we've got our props in front of us. Um, we've got our super ugly but lovely giant punch bowl from the 50s. Very nice punch bowl <laughs> um, with a massive ladle. Uh, this, I think the ladle is about twice the size of the cups, which is a recipe for disaster. Um, and then we've also got a drink dispenser, which is like a container of liquid that has a spigot at the bottom so that people can actually pour it into their their cups. Um, now, both of these are good options, but you should know they're both going to make a mess, um, especially if you make higher proof cocktails. After a um, couple, they're going to go everywhere. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so a couple things to consider there. Um, like I mentioned, there is no human in all of history that has managed to pour a drink from a ladle into a tiny little cup without making a mess. I don't care how sober you are, it's simply not <laughs> possible. So plan for drips and dribbles. Um, you're definitely gonna wanna have a towel nearby. You may wanna actually keep it on a cookie sheet to collect those dribbles. I know it's not quite as glamorous, but maybe if you got a nice towel, I could see it working. Yep. Um, similarly, your drink dispenser, um, I don't care how much you spend, it's gonna drip. They all do. Um, at very best, it'll only drip um, right after serving, but some of the worst of them just drip constantly. Constantly, yeah. So you're just going to have to keep that in mind. There is no perfect service vessel for this sort of thing, unless you just want to serve it in a Cambro. 
Maybe just let people dip their cups in. There you go. Well, the old college party is just right in a trash can. There you go. Wow. That's like a whole nother level from my college party. Oh, yeah. So. Absolutely. Good stuff. Um, I think we used ladles. I think. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Perfect. It was messy. Like <laughs> so again, all these are kind of just considerations for the day of when you are entertaining. Just plan for there to be a little bit of a mess. Not because your friends are sloppy. I'm sure your friends are wonderful. But because, frankly, these just are kind of hard to serve without making a bit of a mess. Yeah, and some just little, little tips for doing a large format like this. Have a little bit of each ingredient kind of chilled in the fridge. Because um, if you if you taste it, you're noticing, oh, it's not quite balanced or I need some more sweetness or some more tartness. Not all recipes are going to scale perfectly. Um, so if you have all those ingredients, you can kind of push the balance one way or dire um, one direction or the other as you need it uh, mm -hmm. for service. Definitely. And the last thing I wanted to mention is kind of goes back to our earlier comment about how punch doesn't really mean anything anymore. Now, if you're going to make a large format Manhattan, for example, and serve that at a party, you might want to warn your guests <laughs> because typically, at least in my groups of friends, if something served in a punch bowl, it's relatively low EBV. It's going to be something that has, you know, maybe sort of a sangria level of alcohol, maybe like wine or beer. It's not going to be cocktail level of alcohol. So you may want to prepare people. I suspect they'll probably find out pretty they'll quickly pretty figure it, yeah. <laughs> with their first sip, but you may want to let people know that this is a cocktail strength punch. It's not just sort of a fizzy, juicy, you know, low ABV drink. Right. Um, people like to know these things. So when we talk about dilution and the water portion of the punch, um, there's a couple things that we can do. We can really have some fun and express some creativity with, uh, with this large format cocktail. Now, some of the things that you can do is replace some of the water with maybe a less acidic juice like a pineapple or orange juice is pretty common. This is something you see a lot. Um, sodas, soda water are also some, uh, some ways you can do it. Sparkling wine, mm -hmm. um, anything along those routes can definitely kind of help to add some more interest to it. Now, one of the other things that are common in punches is to replace a lot of that water with like a tea. Um, so all of a sudden you have this fragrant element to the drink and it's really interesting and really cool. Um, I know people have used like rose water, for example. That sounds really um, good. Or orange blossom water to add a whole other element to the drink. So you can really have a lot of fun when you're creating these large format drinks. But do, of course, keep in mind the characteristics of what you're subbing. If you're, if you're substituting 10% water with 10% orange juice, you need to think about how that's going to impact the, the balance of your cocktail. Right. You're adding sweetness, you're adding a little bit of acidity, um, so it's going to change your drink and you may need to adjust your recipe accordingly. So just sort of plan ahead and think about that. Um, or as Chris said before, reserve some of those ingredients so that you can kind of tweak all of a minute and have it and taste it and get it the way that you're looking for. Absolutely. So the last little piece of this equation is about the large format ice. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where you really have a lot of fun. Yeah, we hinted about it earlier. I mean, when, when I was a kid, I remember my, my mom would just take a big mixing bowl and freeze that and then just plop it right in the middle. And I think it was quite effective. Absolutely. You don't want to take like a bucket of ice and pour it in because then what you're going to have is, first of all, it's going to be a big sloshy mess. Secondly, you're going to have way too much dilution because there's just a ton of surface area on those, you know, hundred ice cubes that's just going to be causing a ton of dilution. Thirdly, ice is terrible in a ladle. <laughs> it's, I talked about a mess before. Oh boy, you are really looking for a mess. Right. You're going to be actually ladling ice out. It's going to go badly. And well, it's, it's going to go splash everywhere once that ice cube, because it's probably going to be the last thing falling out of that ladle. It's going to be a little bit messy. So the, uh, all reasons why you should consider making one large format ice cube, but that's all kind of boring. The nice thing about a large format ice cube is that you could do so much cool stuff with it as well. Yeah, you could do different shapes if you have like um, your mold for bunt cakes or something like oh, that. Absolutely. You put it in there, Baking make it molds. fancy. Uh, you put fruit in there. I mean, if uh, you've been watching Camper English at Academics, you know he's kind of the ice king, and right now he's kind of freezing everything under the sun in t inside everything. of ice cubes. It's, it's pretty cool. It's, he's done some really, really beautiful work freezing like like edible flowers and mm -hmm. things like that into ice. So there's a lot that you can do here. And the nice thing about this part is this is total pre-prep. 
So you're not doing all the minute, you're not doing it the same day. You can do this a week in advance, get your ice all ready to go well well before you're stressed out about your party. <laughs> right, and definitely have a backup block. Uh, it could just be an, a normal block if you're doing multiple punches, so you can use it on any punch bowl uh, that you need. Um, but definitely have some backup large format ice cubes uh, mm -hmm. that you can throw in there if you need to, for sure. Definitely, you don't want to run out of ice. We all know that's a very bad thing. Oh, place. that's a bartender's worst nightmare is running out of ice, man. <laughs> So now for some advanced punch ideas. Don't worry, it's not going to be that advanced. We're not that we're not that fancy people. We're just here. a little bit nerdy. Um, but typically, when you talk about like punches in a bar setting, there's a couple of key words that always come up. We already kind of talked about tea. Um, that is one of those elements that usually is incorporated in a punch behind the bar. Um, the other thing is oleosaccharide. Mm -hmm. um, so this is typically an ingredient that we make and we'll incorporate it into a punch. Oleosaccharum. I know, what it sounds that, so fancy. Is that What does that translate to? Um, it, it means uh, oil sugar, basically. Oil sugar. sugar. Yeah. Oh. And that's basically See, all that it is. that sounds way, way less cool. I know, right? <laughs> Ooh, oleosaccharum. Oily sugar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is a really old school technique. Um, and there's a couple different ways to do it. The traditional way is to zest a bunch of lemons or oranges, put a bunch of sugar on top of it, muddle it, let it sit for an hour or two. Um, but thankfully, Morgenthaler uh, came out with a much easier uh, way to do that uh, using vacuum bags. Basically just peels and sugar and a vacuum bag and that's it. We actually did a video on this a mm -hmm. million years ago. Um, I'll dig it up, I'll put a link in the show notes, which I don't think we've even mentioned yet. I think the show notes are gonna be at mixologytalk.com slash 164. Yep, absolutely. Um, so yeah, that is uh, one way to really add a lot more interest into your drink. Um, it adds this really beautiful aromatic quality from the citrus oils mm -hmm. um, and adds kind of a nice richness uh, to it as well. Yeah, because it's kind of a challenge to get that. The, most of the aromatics from citrus live in the rind. They mm -hmm. actually don't live in the juice. So when you're, that's one of the reasons why uh, juicing your citrus a la minute is always so delicious. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously we are not doing that in a large format cocktail. So this would be a really good way to bring the aromatics from the citrus and put it into that large, large format cocktail by kind of sucking it into the sugar mm -hmm. and then using that essentially lemon oil flavored sugar using that in your cocktail so I kind of I made it sound a lot less fancy sorry oh, about that. nope and then uh, <laughs> at this point you can throw that pinky up when you drink your punch <laughs> I mean look at these cups they're just begging for a pinky absolutely and one of the other things that you brought up earlier um, off camera was the idea of like a flavor changing punch as well yeah I was toying with this idea we, we talked a little bit about um, maybe s swapping out your ice cube from water to something else um, so your ice cube is typically going to be made with water, of course, but it doesn't have to be. If you're making a punch that includes pomegranate juice, then maybe you make your ice cube out of pomegranate juice. And as it dilutes, it's going to change the flavor of your punch. Now, obviously, your mileage may vary because it's going to be really hard to calibrate the balance of that cocktail, but it just feels kind of fun. Right, absolutely. And you can get as creative as you want. Actually, I remember um, we had a cocktail that had a, a flavored ice cube and it drastically changed the 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 profile of the drink um, in a very short time yeah uh, it was kind of interesting and kind of cool um, but yeah something fun you can really kind of try um, I know one of the things that I re experimented with a long time ago was butterfly butterfly pea ice um, so if anybody's tried this in the past you know that once butterfly pea water I guess it is I think it's tea I think yeah it's tea. usually a tea um, touches anything acidic it'll change color I think it's from like blue to purple yeah um, so you can make your ice cubes out of that and uh, once your cocktail hits it it changes the ice cube over from blue to purple or you know as it releases it will um, and it could be a lot of fun it could be something worth trying and there's a lot of things here I mean the moral of the story is the same thing we always say have fun with it um, I would absolutely love to hear some of the, the interesting techniques that other people are using so please do let us know comment on this video comment on the post or of course um, on the post on Instagram too as <laughs> always um, I would love to hear what techniques you are using in your punches 
So I know we're still in the, the quiet before the storm of the holidays. It's the very beginning of November now, but I think they're gonna come fast. So if you're planning on having any cocktail parties this holiday season, I do recommend giving a large format cocktail a try. It's a lot of fun. Frankly, it's kind of a new thing that not, not a lot of people are doing in cocktail parties right now, not, not true craft cocktails at least. So it's something that I think has kind of a wow factor to it. Absolutely, and you, unless you invest in really cool serving uh, That's true. Uh, devices like this big uh, uh, fountain that and we have And actually, here. speaking of investing in cool serving devices, we forgot to mention something. Mm. Um, if you don't have a punch bowl, go to your local thrift store. Oh um, yeah. Not only can you get fabulous 1990s era thrift um, punch bowls, but um, they're really very cheap. Um, <laughs> this, I, I don't know why, it's so weird. I, I can't <laughs> imagine. Um, they're really very inexpensive um, and they typically come with the cups that go with it and all that and it's a very fun thing to do. So if oh, you don't have man. a punch bowl, don't let that deter you. Um, it's still, still something you can, and frankly, buying them from a thrift store might still be cheaper than renting them and you can just donate them right back. I I could see like a 1950s bad sweater party where everything's like 1950s themed and people had to dress up like that or like 60s or like 70s. Like a marshmallow salad? Oh yeah, and like a like a, a tureen of like asparagus and like cauliflower because oh. it's fancy. <sighs> Chris is not in charge of entertaining this year. <laughs> But if you do want to make a punch for your party, again, I would recommend David Wondrich's book. Um, I know we've mentioned this a lot, but it, he truly is the guy mm -hmm. to talk about punches. There's some great history in here and some great recipes to start with as well. Um, and let us know what you're mixing. We would absolutely love to hear it. Come and join us on our in our um, Facebook group. It's You can find it easily at barabub.com slash craft cocktail club. We're actually going to be mixing uh, some awesome uh, punch recipes throughout the month of November. We'll be doing those live in the Facebook group so you can join us, ask your questions, heckle. Um, all definitely the heckle. <laughs> yep. We'd love to see you in there. Um, so definitely do come and join us. Yeah, and uh, if you want any of the show notes for this um, podcast, definitely go over to barbub.com. Nope, sorry, mixologytalk.com slash 164 and we'll have all the links in there for you, for you as well. You know, I don't think I told Chris this. They actually both work. Oh, there you go. Yeah, barbub.com slash 164 should work too. There you go. We'll see ya. It's only been four years. I probably should have told you that. <laughs> Surprise! We'll catch you next time, everyone. Enjoy those punch cocktails. Yep. Cheers. Happy holidays. Cheers. Wow, it's been a while. I know. It's crazy. Stretch it out. <gasps> Stretch it out. Calisthenics. Mm, 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 mm. Getting ready. Podcasts are so. So like 2014. I know. I need a beer. <laughs> Important here. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, so enough about punches. Now let's talk about making them. That doesn't make any sense. Why would I even say that? Are you happy? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not. I know. You got that.